a lovely morning to you children krishna i'm back again with chapter 5 of snapshots and the name of the chapter is mother's day what a lovely name a simple name children till now till now we learned uh, we went through poem articles biography and uh, many kind of things but today what we are going to learn is a play which was set back in 1950 almost a long back almost 70 years from now and the mother's day the mother's day that was written uh, written by j b presley and uh, it was it is about a plight of a housewife the position of a housewife as a mother as a wife in a family okay and those days way back 70 years before what was the condition of women those days not women as we can say housewife the ladies who do not work okay they were treated just as a subordinate of a family who gets no thanks okay the work is not appreciated and the children of the house her husband they give no thanks to her they did they do not value her works and uh, is very ironical that it's almost 70 years but till date the position of the woman is more or less same okay we can say that woman has a is, is an very high okay they have uh, succeeded they have uh, achieved so much and so many things have been done for women but if you turn the newspaper if you switch on the television how many news do you hear of women climbing high of women succeeding or women empowerment more more of the news is covered by the torture done on women but here we are not talking about anything of that here we are talking about only the condition of women as a housewife who does not earn for the family now let's come to the play okay actually the play is a good method of conveying some message to the society okay because uh, through play through play we can enact and we can convey some message simply and very practically things could be conveyed could be visualized as things are happening in each and every house i don't know what is the situation these days but most of you most of you know very well how are the housewife treated at home especially if they do not earn so now we have only five characters in this play who are they mrs any pearson and she is in the lead role along with she is the mother the mother in question for whom it has been given mother's day it's nothing like mother's day which we celebrate each and every year the mother's day here is the day the day she got recognized by her family she got respect from her family her work was valued by her children by her husband so Uh, the play is about Mrs. Annie Pearson, who is a mother in question and who is a wife. Yeah. And now, the second person is Mr. George Pearson, who is Annie's husband or Mrs. Pearson's husband. Third one is Doris. Doris. She is Annie's daughter, and Cyril. He is uh, Mrs. Pearson's son. Both children. they are youngsters and they are very much pampered as much pampered as mr pearson pampered and spoiled okay spoiled in the sense that they cannot move a single inch without getting the work done by mrs pearson she has to do each and everything for them okay and because both of them they go out and even he works fine so now one more character here main character and she plays a very vital role here is mrs fitzgerald mrs fitzgerald and 
she is their neighbor. She is a neighbor and uh, she is an astrologer also. You cannot say she is an astrologer or what. She, when she was in eastern countries, her husband was in army and when she was in eastern country for many many years, she learned few magical tricks. Okay, magical tricks and she will use that trick here with Mrs. Pearson to get her recognized in her family. Now, let's come to the book and let's see how it happened. This is a very interesting play and what I suggest to you, it will take you hardly one hour to read each and every chapter in these books, Hornbill and Snapshot. But this book will take you just one hour to go through it and enjoy it. And it will give you many thoughts also. Okay, many thoughts as children, as a son of your mother, as a daughter of your mother. It will give you a few thoughts also. Okay. So, how is the opening of the play? Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald, they are, uh, they are sitting, they are sitting in, they are sitting in the room, okay, in the hall, okay, in there, in the house hall, okay. And there was a table set in the middle. Both of them, they were sitting in front of each other. And the card was laid on the table. Now, she is Mrs. Fitzgerald. She is doing some forecast based on the cards. Because all of you know very well that they use card for fortune telling also. So she just scrambled all the cards and she went through that and then she told, then she told that Mrs. Pearson is not having a good standing in her family. Now children, what will we learn in this chapter, in this play? Okay, I'll split it into two videos. The first video, that is what you wish uh, going to now, we will learn about Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald, about their personalities. Okay, and at the end I'll tell you how Mrs. Fitzgerald manipulates Mrs. Pearson for interest changing the personality that Mrs. Fitzgerald will have the personality. They cannot change the body, that's not possible, we are human beings. But through some magical tricks which she learned, Mrs. Fitzgerald be, will become will become Mrs. Pearson. She will uh, get the personalities of Mrs. Pearson and she will give her own personality to Mrs. Pearson. So now, why they want to change the personality? What is the need? What is the need and what will be the use? I'll tell you. Okay, as you can see in the book, okay, they're enjoying they're enjoying the tea or coffee or whatever, okay, and the sketch also, the sketch here can tell you about the personality of these two ladies. Now first I will tell you about Mrs. Pearson, okay, Mrs. Pearson, who is the second lady here sitting at the table, she looks a bit worried, okay, she looks a bit worried, a bit frightened because she's that kind of lady, she's a bit timid. She's a soft-spoken lady, soft-spoken lady, soft-hearted lady, okay? She's a bit timid, she's afraid of each and everything, of taking any step because she's afraid that if I do this thing, uh, my son will get angry. If I do this thing, my daughter will get angry. If I do this thing, my husband will feel bad. So she's a bit timid, but she cares about her family. Okay, she's cares about her family, she's very soft-spoken, okay, and uh, she has all kind of womanish quality inside her. She's caring, as I told you, and she is non-complaining lady. So that is about Mrs. Pearson. Now let's come to Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is doing some talk here, sipping a coffee, and at the same time, she is smoking also. So now, how is she? She is totally, she totally contradicts, she totally opposite to Mrs. Pearson in the personality, 
in the nature. She has nothing of a womanish quality. Okay? She smokes, she drinks, she prays gods, she enjoys that, and she learned magical tricks. Magical tricks uh, in Eastern countries when she, her husband was posted there in army. She's and she learned all those eccentric tricks over there. Okay, she is very harsh in nature. Okay, and she is bold. So now we will see their personality and their nature in the play, which goes like this. Now, now let's turn to the second page. Now, in second page, Mrs. Fisherall, she is telling Mrs. Pearson that why, why she has tolerated all those things, why doesn't she teach lessons to her family members, why doesn't she leave them, she let them do their own work. Because what happens, they will come back home every evening, they'll throw their things here and there, and they'll assume that Mrs. Pearson will be ready serving them all the time. Her value in the fam family was more or less like a domestic servant. Okay. She learned working for the family is not a bad thing, but uh, but she, her work was not valued at all. And that was the plight of this play. So now Mrs. Fitzgerald was telling, she's asking Miss, Mrs. Pearson to teach them a lesson, to let them do their own work. But she had never done that before. So she just can't imagine that how can she let them, how can she just leave the work and take a rest and enjoy her day at home and let them do their own work. Because she has never done that, she just can't imagine it at all. So, as you read it, as you read it, okay, Whenever there is a dialogue spoken by Mrs. Pearson, you can see in the brackets, smiling apologetically, because whatever she says, she feels guilty for even thinking of that. That's why she has to apologize, sp speaking like that. Dubiously, dubiously means hesitatingly or with doubt. That, uh, will it be all right if I do this? Is it right? Is it a correct thing? Uh, or am I doing it? Am I going the wrong thing? Okay. And uh, at one point, we'll also see that when she speaks, she flusters. So, what is flusters? Means she was a bit nervous, thinking that, and this point was uh, mentioned when, when she will ask to change the person personality, then she will fluster, means anxiety plus confusion is, uh, for taking any action, immediately she becomes nervous. She becomes nervous just thinking of that. So they had a long talk, they had a long talk. She's trying to convince her, she's trying to change her mind. Mrs. Fitzgerald is trying to change Mrs. Pearson's mind, but she could not succeed. And finally, you can see when she glanced at the watch, at the watch while they were having a talk, while she was trying to manipulate her, while she was trying to convince her, suddenly see, she, uh, Mrs. Pearson, she saw the clock and she became nervous, oh my God! Here it's written, good gracious, good gracious means, oh my God, look at the time, my children, it's time for them to come. And she looks at the table, nothing is laid on the table, the tea is not ready, this and that, that is not ready, means the work she was supposed to uh, get ready for the children and for the husband, who were, uh, who's, uh, it was the time to be back home. So things were not ready on the table and she was afraid that they'll feel bad, they'll get angry, this and that. So she got nervous. She told, oh my God, good gracious, it's time for them to come back home and nothing is laid on the table, things are not ready. I'm just sitting here wasting my time talking. So now Mrs. Fitzgerald, she told, 
Now, then she used the word, this is where your foot goes down. Foot goes down, this phrase the word means, she is authorizing her to stop doing it. Means she's telling it now, this is the very time, this is the correct time. This is the right time when you have to decide it. Okay, when you have to let it become. Okay. So she told that is that is where you put your foot down. Means you have to decide it once for all. That you must do it. You must teach them a lesson. She told no, 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 no I cannot. And the negotiation was going on when Mrs. Fitzgerald she came up with an idea. She suggested, okay, then let me do it. Now she flustered. She flustered at this point. Mrs. Pearson flustered at this point. Means she became nervous and anxious. How can? How can she allow Mrs. Fitzgerald to be the boss of the family? How can she t mm, take charge of her husband and children? Because she knows that she is rude, she is bold, and she is harsh in nature and very straightforward. So she told, no, 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 thank you very much. I cannot, I cannot just imagine how you can do this and how they will react if you interfere into my family matters. That's impossible. Then Miss Fitzgerald, she told coolly, oh, you haven't got the idea. You haven't got the idea. Then what did she say that, okay, I will take charge of the house, but not as me, but I will do it as you, means I will become you and you will become me. So what does it mean? She told that uh, I have learned the trick when I was there and I know, I know the art of changing personality. She told that I will remain in your, means you will remain in your house. In your body as Mrs. Pearson, you will stay here as you are, but you will get my personality. Means the personality Mrs. Pearson's body will have will be the personality of Mrs. Fisera, that is bold. Bold and strict, but. And while Mrs. Fisera, who was doing the magic spell, she will get the personality of Pearson timid and soft-spoken lady who cares for the family. So, yeah, she was a bit doubtful also that how is it possible? Then once she asked also, she cleared it out. Children, it happens with anybody. If somebody asks us to change the, to change the personality, even we will have the same doubt. What will happen if I keep remaining like this? If I keep remaining as, a, uh, as Mrs. Fitzgerald? And if you keep remaining as Mrs. Pearson, then she told, don't worry. Even though I have learned this trick long back, I can change, we can interchange back again and a moment. And any time you want, you will, uh, you, will, you will have your personality back again as Pearson and I will get my personality back into my own body. That finally, finally she agrees with a little bit of doubt in her heart. She agrees because somehow she wanted them to learn. She wanted her family to learn to value her. So she agrees. She agrees. Then Mrs. Pearson told, sorry, Mrs. Fitzgerald told Pearson now. Uh, the, they can be back any moment, so we have to hurry. Just give me your hand. So, Mrs. Pearson put her hand into Mrs. Fitzgerald's hand, laid on the table, and she just spoke some magical words, some magical spells of those words. She says, okay, astratadam and all that. Things she told like this, and she was having Mrs. Pearson's hand in her hand, and after she spoke, after she said the magical words, okay, the 
interchange of the personality took place and as soon as it happened, both of them, they relaxed. The word lax has been used, I'm not sure whether I have written here. Lax means, okay, they became cool and sl slacked, okay. Both of them, uh, they became loose. Means, uh, things, because things were done. So, now, now what happened? Let's come to page number 36. That is, after this little scene of doing magical tricks, playing magical words, after that, after that what happened? Mrs. Pearson, Mrs. Pearson, her voice, her voice became harsh and stern and strict and bold. And Mrs. Fitzgerald, who was doing the magical spell, immediately she got the personality of Mrs. Pearson and she became timid, soft-spoken lady, who was afraid, who was nervous. Now, Mrs. Pearson, who was having a personality of Mrs. Fitzgerald, she told, see what I mean, dear, dear, and she snatched the cigarette from Mrs. Fitzgerald's hands, because now she was Pearson. And Mrs. Pearson, now inside her was Mrs. Fitzgerald's personality, and she needed cigarette. So she snatched it, she was smoking, and now they talk for some time. They talk for some time, and Mrs. Pearson, she was enjoying all the scene because inside she was physical, she was enjoying, and she told, Now, I'm here, so now I will teach them a lesson, I will tell them how to get it done. So now, when it was time for children to come, for her husband to come, Pearson's husband, Pearson's children, so now the scene will be changed. Now the scene will be changed. Every day they will see, they will see their mother waiting for them with the clothes ready because in the evening, in the evening, uh, uh, every day what happens, uh, this Doris, the daughter, she will go out, she will dress up nicely and she will go out to meet a boyfriend, Charlie Spence, Charles Spencer and uh, Cyril. Cyril will get ready to go to the club. And uh, her husband also, Mr. George Pierce, and he will also go to the club. So nobody stays home. They'll, they'll just come, they'll throw their things, they will change their dress, they'll take tea and go out. So, let us assume the same thing will take place. Children and husband will come back home in the same mood, but will everything will be the same? Will they find, will the children find their, mother, find their mother waiting for them? Can't say. Because their mother Pearson would be sitting there on the table. But having the personality of Israel, she'll be playing the cards. Okay, she'll be playing the cards, she'll be smoking and drinking and sitting there. Now let us see what will happen when the children come back home and I will cover that part in my second video. So till then, have a very good time. Let us meet again, continue in the second video. Bye children.